Welcome to this Zombicide Black Plague painting tutorial. In this video, we'll be painting Baldrick the Mage from the Black Plague core box set, using the official Warpaint Zombicide Black Plague paint set from the Army Painter, as well as sprays, brushes, and more Zombicide wall paints. But first, let's have a look at the products we used in this tutorial. We started off using the miniature file set, then Color Prama Skeleton Bone, and of course the Black Plague paint set, the core zombie set and the two expansions, Toxic Prison set and the Survivor paint set. We used the Most Wanted brush set and we finished off with the Aegis Suit Satin Varnish for protection. The miniatures out of the zombie side box set are simply excellent. However, you still need to remove the mold lines using the files from the miniature file set. There are three different shapes of files, making it easy to find the right file for the right job. Afterwards, it's essential to wash the miniatures with some hot soapy water to remove any release agent left over from the casting process. That way you ensure that your spray and paint can stick to the model afterwards. Baldrick is mostly dressed in a beige robe, and we went for the skeleton bone color primer for this job saving lots of precious painting time, as half the model will already be base coated. Please note that due to the heavy pigment inside color primers, they need to be used slightly different from other hobby sprays. Start off by shaking the can gently for a minute and a half to mix the paint inside. We stuck the miniatures on cardboard while spraying for maximum control and also to stop the model from falling over. Now spray the model from a distance of no more than 20 centimeters, using flowing movements at all time. No short bursts. Finish off by turning the spray upside down and empty the nozzle until only gas comes out. That stops the nozzle from clogging up and you can use your spray again next time. And here we have Baldrick the Mage with all his fellow heroes. Remove him from the board and we are ready to start painting. With the spray fully dry, it's time to start painting. And as with all the heroes in these tutorials, I tend to start with the flesh. I'm using the Survivor skin out of the Survivor paint set, and I'm using the Regiment brush for this job. Now the aim here, of course, is to not get paint onto the skeleton bone ropes. However, should that happen, we can always touch up later. For now, it's all about getting a flat base coat onto the model. With the flesh tone done, I move on to the biggest part of the model, and that's the cloak. And that's being painted Necromancer Cloak. Of course, I'm using the Regiment brush, as this is a large part of the model. What you're trying to achieve here at the base coat stage is really just to get a flat, even base coat all over the model. Again, trying to avoid getting paint onto the sprayed skeleton ropes. Using the leather brown paint, I move on painting the staff and the boots and the belts using mostly the regiment brush, as this ensures a good pace on my base coating. Baldrick's little potion bottle is painted moldy clothes. And even though it's a small part of the model, I'm still sticking to my regiment brush. It's got a good fine point and it's easy to paint. I move on to paint Baldrick's giant sword using the Claymore Blade Metallic from the Black Plague paint set. For the tiny belt buckle, I actually shift over and use the Insane Detail brush. To add a little variation, I shift the brown to the dirt spatter from the Zombie Core set. And with this, I'm doing the pouches and some of the other brown bits. For the sword handle, I'm using the bright gold, again from the Black Plague paint set, being careful not to get any paint onto the already painted bits. The beard and hair is painted brain matter beige, again using a mix of the Richmond brush for the large area, and for the bushy eyebrows, the insane detail brush. And that concludes the base coating. Mm -hmm. 
And with the base coating all done, it's time to shade the wizard. And I'm using the deep shader all over the model. Using the regimen brush, I load up the brush with a lot of ink, splash it on, and simply making sure I don't get too big pools anywhere. And since I don't have to worry about getting inks only on certain areas, well, it's a fairly fast job. Just wish away. It's important to leave the ink to fully dry before we move on to the highlight. And the first highlight stage is all about redefining the base colors. For the ropes, I'm using the zombie skin out of the zombie corset. That's being the same match as the skeleton and bone spray. Using the regimen brush, I go over the model, leaving only deep shader showing in the deepest recesses. I proceed doing the same thing on the skin tone, this time using the base coat color, the survivor skin. You want to avoid getting the paint into the eye sockets and in between fingers and leaving that deep shader showing in the deepest recesses. I continue redefining the base coat color on the ropes using the necromancer cloak once again. Using the leather brown as in the base coat stage, I move on to all the brown bits. The boots and belts is painted normally, whereas the staff is dry brushed. Notice how the flat side of the small dry brush makes this process really easy. The small pouches are painted dirt spatter, just like in the base coat stage, and I move on to the brain matter beige for the hair and the beard. The moustache and eyebrows is done with the insane detail brush, whereas the main part of the hair is done with a small dry brush. And that leaves me just with the metallics. Since this will be the final highlight, I'm being a bit more careful now. I'm using the claymore blade, just as in the base coat stage. And using the regimen brush, I carefully paint along the side of the blade to create that highlight effect. Just like before, the tiny bits are painted using the insane detail brush. And for the bright gold handle, I'm again using the insane detail brush, as this is a small part of the model. Well, I did actually forget the green bottle, which was given another coat of molder clothes. And as with all the tutorials in this series, we're going to give the models a second highlight. This time mixing a lighter color and painting it on only a very small area. For the skin tone, I'm mixing brain matter beige with the survivor skin. And using the insane detail brush, I go over the model again, only on the very raised edges. Tip of the nose, the knuckles, and so on. Baldrick's ropes is also getting a second highlight, this time with pure brain matter beige on top of the zombie skin. Trying to leave some of the zombie skin showing into the deepest areas and only getting brain matter beige on the very top. I carry on with brain matter beige, going over the hair and the beard a second time just to get a really bright, almost white color. All of the leather brown areas is getting a second highlight with bony spikes out of the toxic prison paint set. Notice how I use the flat side of the brush on the staff, as it's really easy to pick out the raised areas this way. The belts and the boots are painted using the insane detail brush. The other brown areas painted with dirt spatter is highlighted using a mix of dirt spatter and survivor skin. Again, using the thin insane detail brush. And then I move on to the biggest areas the dark cloak. That's highlighted using the filthy suit. And the trick here is to keep the final highlights as thin as possible using the insane detail brush. That way you keep the overall dark gray color. And as all the metal was done in the first highlight, the final bit to do is just to highlight the green bottle at the front. And for that, I'm using the yellow bait blonde. And that's Baldrick all painted up.
With the painting all done, it's time to do the bases. Using the Regiment brush, I start off giving the base a coat of filthy suit. With that dry, I take out the small dry brush and some necromancer cloak. I stipple on some of the dark gray on top of the base. The trick here is to have a fairly dry brush and just stipple on some uneven patches of gray to represent sort of gravel on the underground. The next stage is to paint on some old dry blood. I'm using the crusted sole for this, thinning the paint ever so slightly to represent that the blood has seeped into the ground. I finish off by dabbing a few dots of the gloss glistening blood to represent the fresh blood being spilled. Baldrick has been busy at late slaying lots of zombies. And to represent that, I'm also painting on some thinned down glistening blood on his blade. The last thing to do before starting a game is to protect your miniatures. For this, we're using the Aegis suit satin varnish. Give the models a few thin coats on either side. And notice that spray varnishes should be used at a distance from about 30 centimeters, longer than when you sprayed with your color prime. Once you're done, hold the spray can upside down and empty the nozzle until only gas comes out. That way, it's ready to use the next time. And there we are, Baldrick the Mage, ready to take on the zombie hordes. Make sure you check out our other tutorial videos on the other survivors, on the zombies, on the necromancer, and of course, the abomination. Enhance your gaming and play with painted miniatures. Thanks for watching.